We're going live. Hey guys, this is Daniel with APA. I'm the general manager of the shop here, and to my left is Jared Joplin. He is our president, CEO, tribal chief, um, and so on and so forth. So you've come to this point, you've decided that you've, you've done your research and you want an APA break, which is a fantastic choice, um, but you probably have a couple questions like, what's the difference between a Gen 1 or a Gen 2, and which size do you need? So let's ask the bandana. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of the bandana. Um, what's the difference between a Gen 1 and Gen 2? The main difference between a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 is simple. The Gen 1, um, which are, are these, um, are going to require a gunsmith's installation. It's going to give you the cleanest look, okay. um, but it's going to require a gunsmith's installation. The, the Gen 2, if you already have a threaded barrel, it has a nut. It's actually a two-piece brake, um, and you can use that nut to index. So it's completely self-timing. There's how long does it take to install? Roughly 30 seconds, once you know what you're doing. If you're gonna put Loctite or something on it, it might take a little bit longer, but if you have a threaded barrel, it goes right on um, and you lock it down with a nut and a crescent wrench. It's important to have a snap-on crescent wrench because they're calibrated differently. Another question you might have is, why is there so many different sizes of brakes and which size do I choose? So, Jared, what is the difference between all these micro, little, fat, and so on? Really, um, it all started with the, the fat bastard. Um, we really wanted something to tame the 338 Lapua because we really didn't feel like there was something out there at that time. So it started with that, um, but it became really popular, really fast. Um, we didn't even have a name for it. It was just the muzzle brake. But, um, we had a lot of people that are like, hey, this is great, but we need something to put on our hunting barrel. So we came out with the Micro. This is uh, pretty close to uh, number three contour sporter barrel that you might find on a hunting gun. And we had a lot of people that were asking for different sizes for different things. So we branched out into different sizes. Everything from this is the, the Micro, the Little, the Fat, this is the Triple X, this is the Double X. So we've really, we can cover the gamut. It's really not about the caliber. Okay. It's, it's more about the, the barrel size itself. Okay. We're trying to give a best case scenario for the size of barrel that someone has. So in some cases, we've gone all the way down to a 338 Ultra Mag, which is probably around the max that you could do in the micro, but we've done it with great success. Gotcha, okay. So what pieces of information do we need to have to choose the right size, whether it be micro, little, fat? How do we know, how do I know what to choose? Well, really, we only need to know two things, or you, the consumer, whoever, gunsmith, yeah. two things. We need to know the shoulder diameter, which is right here behind the brake, um, that's gonna be buttoned up against the shoulder. Okay. We, need, we need that diameter right there, and we need the caliber so we can get the right thread pitch. Uh, in some cases you can't, you know, your thread might be too small for the actual caliber that you're using. So those are really the only two things that you need to know. Um, and I mean, you can measure it with a ruler, but that's just kind of guessing. I mean, we really need uh, a measurement with a set of dial calipers right there where the muzzle brake's gonna be. Let's just call it a half an inch to five eighths behind um, the, the crown. And uh, if we get that measurement, we know which size to put you in. Okay. Why do you need to know that? Is there is there a structural reason, or how do, how does that relate to the Funny size? you should ask that, Daniel. <laughs> it is important, actually, and this is why. Um, I'll use this for an example. This is our LB, little bastard. And you can see, I don't know if you can see on camera here or not, but there's an area behind here where the shoulder's locking up against. And you need plenty of meat there, especially on the Gen 2. Uh, because it, it's not, in some cases, being locked on with Loctite. Um, you need some meat here behind the, the, the threads to, to lock, lock up. Onto. Yeah, okay. because if you don't have that, if you have 50 thousandths or something, I mean, if it's a small amount, it's going to come loose. So there are some cases where um, we recommend um, putting Loctite on the threads. 
If we put it on, on the Gen 2, if we put it on the Gen 2, that Loctite is going to go on the muzzle threads only. You don't want to put it on the inside of the nut? No, because that's what gives it the flexibility. Okay. So once you lock that in place, you know, it loses its flexibility or um, a, its ability to self-index. Right. So uh, on the Gen 1, we always Loctite or rock set those in place when we install them. Just stop talking, guys. <laughs> stop talking. I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to focus. So what then if somebody doesn't have a dial caliper set? If they don't have a set of dial calipers, you could use a ruler. Um, you'd have to be really close with it. Um, but we, it would give us a general idea of what break we need to get you in. So, I mean, you, you could do that. Okay. So I guess the next thing is, let's take a look at a couple of rifles with both Gen 1 and Gen 2 brakes on them. Okay, I've got Precious, which is uh, one of our critter getters. Um, this has a micro on it, and you can see this is a sporter weight barrel. It's uh, what you might expect to see on a, on a deer rifle or, or whatever, but it was designed specifically for a hunting gun. And it's nice and small, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want to put a fat bastard on this because it's going to look stupid. Yeah. So can we put a half 28 thread in here? Yeah, but you're going to look stupid. You're going to look like you have something you shouldn't have on the end of your gun. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got anyway, you. Grab, the, uh, grab the 86 there and we'll show them what a... Do you uh, recommend always wearing a bandana while you're installing a muzzle brake? Yeah, it really helps to lock it down uh, as long as you're using your fancy snap-on uh, crescent wrench. Okay. Uh, you know what? The normal crescent wrenches aren't cal calibrated quite as well as the snap-on, so... Daniel's only done this once or twice, so it's pretty much that simple. Um, but that... See, now on a barrel this size, you can see it, it pretty much blends in. So if we wanted to... If we wanted that bigger look and didn't want it to blend in quite as well, I mean, not that you need it. This is a 308. This is all the brake it would need. But if you wanted that larger look, um, we could go to the Fat Bastard. Let's get that off and put this on. So you can see it's a totally different look for the gun. This is a APA 86, by the way, available at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be uh, a suppressed gun so a 16 inch barrel with a brake on it's gonna be pretty rowdy yeah. but I, anyway you can see there's a totally different look for the gun so if you had a larger barrel I mean if this barrel was 24 inches it would be smaller but anyway you can see how yeah. it's really just a, a cosmetic thing unless you get into the really big calibers then you start you start splitting hairs a little bit, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to get a little bit more specific. But I have people in PRS, a lot of people running uh, the Fat Bastard on their six millimeter, yeah. whatever six dashers. Um, fair enough, I have one on mine. But uh, do I need it? No. It seems to look better, and we're Americans. We like big trucks, big tires. We want big muzzle brakes too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know I do. <laughs> you don't have a big truck. So one of the common questions that we get is how is it going to come in the mail? A lot of people see this, they see this picture online and they receive this in the mail and they're like, uh, what the heck? So explain that. Well you. again, the Gen 1 requires um, a gunsmith's installation. So, you know, gunsmith's going to install it and it's going to look like that. The reason it's shaped this way is because there's a ton of different barrels out there. Right. We don't know what diameter barrel you have, and we certainly can't make a break for every single one. So the gunsmith's going to get it. Um, he's going to index it. We never want to cut the back end of the brake. They're going to cut the back of the shoulder after they thread it to, to get this brake indexed correctly. And then they'll taper it somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees generally. Um, so it's blended in like that. And then you have a perfect seamless look. The Gen 2 comes the way it comes. It, it's just like that. Um, it is, again, two pieces. So um, if you have a threaded barrel, if you don't have a threaded barrel, you just have a gunsmith thread it or we can thread it for you, whatever. We do thousands of them a year. So um, you can expect to get those in the mail. 
Great. Another really common question we get is, do these brakes need to be cleaned? And if so, how? How often? I would say we generally clean ours every 500 to 1,000 rounds. It really just depends on the, the cartridge that you're using and how dirty it is. So you start to get some carbon, I'm going to use the big one uh, because you can see better, but you start to get some carbon buildup uh, in the end and sometimes in the in front of the crown here. Can that affect accuracy? Absolutely it can. I mean, you're not going to drive your car. Anytime you have combustion, you have... Um, a, a byproduct of that right. combustion so you have burnt carbon in here you don't drive your car for 200,000 miles and not maintain it I do but well that's because you drive a freaking 1980 Camry but um, <laughs> Honda <laughs> oh okay my bad Honda anyway let's, let's, <laughs> but you should clean the entire thing the gen 2 you can take right off and do it the gen 1's a little bit more complicated if you're gonna clean a gen 1 you should clean your barrel first, get all the carbon out of there, and lube it, and then take some Lemmy Shine. Lemmy Shine is, uh, or it's basically soap. You can buy it at uh, in your uh, dishwashing, wherever the dishwashing detergent is. Uh, Lemmy Shine should be there. You can mix it up in a cup. We've actually are taken um, our rifles and stuck them down in a cup, and got the the water level to about right there, and let it soak. You can pick it out. But, How long do you let it soak? Um. Normally 20-25 minutes. Um, you can see it. Uh, I mean literally in a lot of cases it'll wipe out with a q-tip like mud. So it's not a big deal and it's, it's safe to do um, but you do need to maintain them because uh, eventually you're gonna have accuracy degradation without it. Guys, I hope that um, answers most of your questions. I'm sure there's going to be questions that we didn't answer. They're always out there, and we can't answer them all. So uh, we'll put a link up right here. You can click on it. It'll take you to our sales email, just sales at AmericanPrecisionArms.com. If you have any questions, just shoot us, shoot us an email. We'll do the best we can to answer it. And uh, we, we thank you for your interest in our product, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys out on the range. <laughs> Turn it off. I can't do this with it on. <laughs>